Hey, greetings everyone and welcome back to another episode of Plan B Success. Who we have with us today is Benjamin Hardy, an organizational psychologist. We'll find out what that's all about. And also a multi-time best-selling author. And he's doing other things besides writing and being an organizational psychologist. So welcome aboard, Benjamin. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So uh, my wife and I live in Orlando, Florida with our five kids. We adopted three of those kids from the foster system and uh, just really grateful to have our family. And uh, I write books about psychology and business and just, you know, we, we kind of live simple lives and just kind of hunker down right now <laughs> for the coronavirus. But uh, yeah, I've got an interesting background. Uh, my, my parents divorced when I was 11. My father became a drug addict, which was really heavily impactful for my, my background and kind of, it's not really what led me into psychology, but it, it was a crazy experience for a lot of years. Very insta, you know, very, a lot of instability. Uh, I will say that my father is no longer a drug addict. Uh, when I was 20 years old, I actually went on a Christian mission, uh, church mission, and that really changed my life. It actually changed my life so much that that's really what led me to studying psychology. But, uh, you know, I've since reframed my past. I don't view my past the same way. Um, my relationship with my father is amazing. He's really grown and changed. And, uh, you know, I, you know, your, your view of the past can change and adapt over time. And so, you know, I just now study psychology and have a lot of cool collaborations and really enjoy conversations like this. So tell me why psychology? Uh, again, just watching myself transform so much just made me, you know, and reading really amazing books and journaling and letting go of former traumas and just being interested in people, watching, you know, interested in why people are the way they are and what leads them to being that way and uh, interested in how people can make, you know, make meaningful, positive, purposeful changes and, and direct their lives. I mean, I just, I think that people are so interesting and I do believe there is a purpose to life. And so I just wanted to understand people and do all that I could to better under my, understand myself and hopefully be helpful to other people. And what is an organizational psychologist? Organizational psychology is different from maybe more of the typical like therapeutic. So it's not clinical. It's not counseling. Organizational is very much business. So like the study of leadership, teams, uh, culture, um, training, development, uh, motivation. So it's very much in the realm of organizations and businesses and stuff like that. So do you work specifically with organizations or do you work with people in general as well? I don't do either. <laughs> okay. I've got the background. I've studied organizational psychology, but I'm actually a writer. I, I, I do writing and online entrepreneurship. So I, I love the background, love the theory, love the knowledge uh, and the thinking that I got through my PhD, but I'm, I'm not a traditional organizational psychologist at all. Uh, I very much am a professional writer and a, uh, you know, and I, I do online, you know, I do uh, entrepreneurial collaborations, but my background in psychology influences how I look at the world and think. All right. So let's talk a little bit about your books. So I think Willpower Doesn't Work, that's one of your books. And I think that was a little bit before, right? Uh, probably 2018? Yeah, that book came out in 2018. And then Personality Isn't Permanent, that's your latest book. Yes. All right. So can you talk a little bit about uh, Personality Isn't Permanent? Sure. Yeah, so the book is all about kind of the myths that most people believe about personality, about who they are. And it's about why these myths are incorrect and about how your personality is truly shaped and about how you can become who you would like to be. <laughs> um, personality is more than anything a habit. It's a, it's a way of doing things. It's a pattern. It's not innate. Uh, the general views of personality are that you're, you know, these are pop culture views. These are non-scientific views. Um, but kind of the pop culture, traditional views of personality are that it's innate, that it's non-changeable, you know, that it just you are who you are. And that as a result, you need to discover your true self. And once you discover your true self, then you can live the life that you want. Um, that's kind of the traditional view of psychology it's, or, or the traditional view of personality. It's one of the reasons why personality testing is a $2 billion industry, because people think that they can discover themselves through personality tests. And uh, those personality tests, Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, DISC, most of the popular ones are very non-science. They're, they're terrible, bad science. <laughs> and uh, they lead people to a fixed mindset and being inflexible about who they could be. And so this book really explains how people become who they are, uh, how their personality is shaped, but also how you can and should be the one who shapes your personality. Okay. And then your earlier book, The Willpower One, what's that about? Willpower Doesn't Work is about context, the power of environment, and about how your environment is far more powerful than your individual agency. You know, for example, my, my three foster kids, we adopted, the, you know, 
they were taken out of a very limiting environment. They didn't have very many choices or options in that environment. Um, and when you change someone's environment, you change their options. Just like now with the coronavirus, you change the situation. Now we can't go to the movie theater. So this is a movie. Uh, so willpower doesn't work is all about how context shapes choices and shapes options and about how if you're mindful, you're the one who shapes your own environment so that you can be who you want to be. That includes surrounding yourself with people who are similar to, to your goals. That involves removing things that are keeping you stuck. And so it's, it's, it's just about thinking more broadly, more holistically about who you are rather than putting all the emphasis on yourself. And we put all the emphasis on ourselves a lot in our culture because we're very individualistic. We focus on ourselves and we ignore context. And so that book just explains how context is more important and about how you can and should shape your own context so that you can be who you want to be. So let's talk a little bit about the current situation, right? So this is probably the largest crisis or of this magnitude probably we've ever seen in our lifetimes or we, I mean, I'm, hope, I'm hoping we don't see anything more than this. But uh, when you really look at what's going on, it's one single crisis across the world. The entire world is affected by it. The entire world is going through it, you know, and probably a majority of the world right now is staying at home for that matter. And, you know, some of them out there fighting the war with coronavirus. The new normal, you know, I believe that there's going to be a new normal once we all come out of this. And that's going to be very different from what was there before. What's your take on that? Is is there going to be a new normal or are we, are we going to go back to our old way of things at some point? Both. We're going to go back to a lot of things and things will be different. There's a quote from Charles Darwin. He said that it's not the strongest of the species or the smartest, but it's the ones that are the most adaptable to change, to thrive. I think that's true of success and it's true of evolution. And so I think that whatever happened is happening and you can either be reactive to it and you can be overwhelmed by it and you can be paralyzed by it, or you can start to think about who you want to be, who your future self is, and you can start to respond proactively and consciously to the new situation so that as things adjust and adapt around us, you're actually moving forward rather than being paralyzed. So the principles of how to be successful or how to thrive don't change in this environment. Yes, this environment is complex and it's different, but adaptability and learning and being proactive and being intentional are the same skills in this environment as was before, you know, Corona. You know, when you write your books, is that more based on your interpretation of your life or is that more based on your day-to-day experiences? What comes out in those books? A lot of things come out in these books. I mean... Uh, I, I, I like to hope and like to think that a lot of it comes from a good perspective of the scientific literature, um, but also my own perspective. Of course, I have my own perspective and it's very flawed, very limited. My, my current self is, a, you know, I, I don't see the world perfectly. I see the world as I am and, and I don't see the world as I used to see it because I'm a different person than I was three to five years ago or even less. And my future self is going to see the world differently than I am now. And that's true for you as well. So it's not just me. You know, I'm looking at the world. You know, the reason I wrote personality as an example is because of what I see not only in myself, but what I see in the world. And, and then what I see in the science and what I see in the situation, I just try to be helpful to the situation. So it's not just my head. It's, it's me looking at what's going on and, you know, how can we address this? And, and what does the science say about it? And what do smart people say about it? It's just, it's just trying to be a learner. I mean, that's me just trying to share helpful perspectives to hopefully alter other people's perspectives and help them to be successful or help them to maybe just rethink what's going on. You know, one of the things that you are doing is you also have your online courses and of course you, you're into speaking as well. Uh, what kind of courses do you teach? I've got a course that's a year long course called AMP Accelerated Momentum Program. That course is, you know, it's not even available right now for purchase, but it's, it's something that, um, you know, it's, it's weekly and monthly content and challenges and community to help people to live intentionally. Uh, I've got courses that have taught people my strategies that I've used to have over a hundred million people read my blogs. So I've got like blogging and content marketing courses. Um, but I don't necessarily view myself as a course creator, to be honest with you. I mean, I've made some good money selling courses, but I primarily view myself as like a, a writer and a teacher and a thinker. And then, husband, father, etc. Of course. And then when you when you speak, what are you speaking on? Uh, usually the topics that I write about. You know, I mean, I've spoken at big events and you know leadership events, 
creative events, you know, but I usually write, I usually speak about the topics that I write on because I generally think they're pretty dang relevant to most people. They're more fundamental aspects of people. Now, do you have people reaching out to you, whether organizations or entrepreneurs or general public asking for mentorship or asking for any specific help? Yes, all the time. And my assistant fields them and generally we say no, because that's not my focus right now. That's not my goal. Right. Okay. So what's, uh, what's in the future? What are you planning to do the next five, 10 years? Beautiful. I love that question. My future self is going to make a big pivot. I'm actually going to be shifting out of uh, a lot of the entrepreneurial stuff that I'm up to. I'm going to keep writing books, keep writing books like, uh, like these ones right here. You know, I'll keep doing stuff like this, but um, I'm going to get out of a lot of the entrepreneurial stuff, the collaborations and things like that. And I'm going to be shifting a lot more towards maybe the more spiritual and even the more religious side. I'm going to be focusing more on, um, you know, my faith, my church, stuff like that. And, you know, in order to do that, though, I, I really want to position my, I mean, I'll still be writing popular press books, but uh, yeah, I'll be focused more on, on that side of things. And so in order to actually get there, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be planning on selling millions of copies of my books to position myself financially and also in other ways so that I can pretty much dedicate all of my time to kind of more of my faith-based perspectives and obviously my family. And where do people find you? BenjaminHardy.com is where you can find all my blogs. You can get access to free online courses that I give away, especially for people who pre-order Personalities and Permanent or buy the book. I give away all sorts of courses that I've sold for thousands of dollars in the past. Um, but also there's just hundreds of blog posts that you can read about how to you know, update your mindset, your identity, your commitment, let go of trauma in the past. I mean, just, there's all sorts of really good stuff based on science. You know, when you look back at your life, what are you most thankful for? It's a beautiful question. Um, I'm really just, I don't know if I could pinpoint one thing, to be honest with you. I think that my gratitude for for little things increases, you know, as I hopefully mature as a person. Uh, grateful for even my traumas, grateful for my past, grateful for my challenges. But my wife and my kids are a big one. My parents, my close relationships, my faith, those are the things that really matter. And what are you most afraid of? Um, hmm. Probably not really sure if this is an accurate, you know, that's such a good deep question that I don't think that this is probably the right answer, but it's the one that's coming to mind is probably just either letting myself down, not letting myself down, letting the people in my life down, maybe letting God down. Like I think that those are maybe like the, the fears that I maybe have, but don't, I, I think that things are a little bit more flexible than that. You know, I think that it's okay to mess up, you know, so I'm not really sure. I do have fears, obviously, um, but I think that you don't have to be perfect. And so I think you can learn along the way. Absolutely. And what are you most happiest about? Life. Life is such a great experience. It's such a beautiful thing. Uh, I mean, I'm just grateful to be alive, grateful for my family, grateful for little things like this conversation with you. You know, the fact that you asked that question is really amazing. And that's such a great question. So I think I'm just, you know, increasingly happy with life and the small and simple things and becoming more and more aware of just the little things, you know, and, uh, you know, letting go of the things that maybe aren't, you know, going as well and just, just really focusing on what I'm happy about and what I'm grateful for. So pretty much everything right now, my friend. <laughs> and when you look at your kids, right, you mentioned you have five kids. I would not be who I am today without my kids. I would not. I would be making very different decisions with my life. Um, they teach me empathy. They teach me patience. They teach me love. They teach me forgiveness. They forgive me all the time because I don't show up as well as I could. They teach me joy. They teach me simplicity. They teach me so many things every single day. I mean, you know, I've got two twin little girls who are 15 months old. And then I've got our three older kids that we adopted from the foster system. And they're all just such great kids. You know, they teach me how to love. You know, that's one thing that I'm learning how to get better at. That's something that I want to get better at is learning how to just love them and just be happy. And, you know, that's something that they, they teach me every single day. Awesome. And what do you look forward to from life? There is a really good quote from Gordon Livingston. He wrote a book called uh, Too Soon, Old, Too Late, Smart, which I recommend to your audience. But he said that people need three things to be happy, something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to. And so I love your question. So I think we all need something to look forward to. Uh, I'm always looking forward. I, I love looking forward. And so I think it's so important to have goals. And, and so for me, I'm looking forward to, you know, that future self that I was talking to you about, getting to the place in my career where my books have sold millions of copies, where my family's in a financial situation where I can pretty much um, 
I mean, I am pretty much doing what I wanted. You know, this is what I chose to do. I'm a professional author. So, I mean, I'm not in a place of like, I'm in a place that I designed to be, but once you get to where you want to go, then your vision expands, you know? And so I, I'm excited to be dedicating all of my time to kind of my more spiritual focus, you know, and to be able to continue to write books that I love, but to be in a place in a situation and even in a, in a skill set level, like in a capability level where I can do greater good kind of on my higher priorities and goals. And I just really, it's going to be so fun. And what would you like your legacy to be? Mostly just helping people. I would love just to mostly, you know, I don't really need all the accolades. Uh, I just really want to just be someone who was helpful to either specific people or to bigger groups in general, in general. I just want to, I just want to help people move forward and, and to, uh, you know, make the changes that they want in their lives. Absolutely. Well, this has been great, Benjamin. What would be the one takeaway that you would want to leave with our listeners? The one takeaway I think primarily is, is that, you know, you're not the person you used to be. And I think that that can be pretty obvious that if you think about who you were four or five years ago, you're probably not that same person, but the same is true of your future self. Your future self is not going to be the same person you are today. And because of that fact, you don't have to overly hold on to who you think you currently are right now. Like, yes, you can have goals. Yes, you can have perspectives. But if you hold too tightly onto who you think you are, for example, if you overly define yourself, overly categorize yourself, uh, then it's going to limit your future. And so if you, if you, if you define your future self really clearly, who you plan to be, and then if you start to strive to be that person, if you start to tell people about your goals, uh, you're going to go through an amazing transformation. You're going to start to be more consistent with your future rather than being consistent with your past. And that's what I would invite you to do is to really take the time, whether it be in your journal or in other places to clarify who you plan to be. Cause it's the number one regret in people's lives that they are not being true to themselves, but instead they're trying to live up to the expectations of those around them. So if you're just honest and genuine about what you want, and then you start telling everyone about that. And then you start making steps in that direction. Then you'll be living consistent with your future, not your past. And that's where you can start to be really joyful and happy. And that's where you can start to have a lot of learning and joy. So that's what I would invite people to do. And uh, I teach very in-depthly how to do that into personalities of permanent. There's a lot to that. So I'd encourage readers, obviously, to scope out this book. If, uh, if, if that's your interest, I think it will totally blow your mind and really help you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. A lot to learn from you. And I would encourage the listeners to go and check out your website and, of course, your books. Thank you so much. You're an amazing guy. It was really fun to talk to you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. All right. Same here. Thank you. Hey, I hope you liked that episode. Please make sure you tune in to Plan B Success Podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform. Or you could even go to YouTube. Or you could check out the episodes on planb.live or rajivmudumba.com. And please make sure that you subscribe so that you get updates on these episodes coming out pretty much on a weekly basis. There's three episodes coming out on a weekly basis. And take a moment to leave a review and a comment on any of the platforms that you subscribe to. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.